Do you actually get to a location faster because you traveled first class, not second, business class and not economy? Well, yes, for sure you'll have got there more comfortably, but on an e-mountain bike is the cheaper ride the more comfortable one? Yes, in today's show, we are not talking about upgrades. We are taking a look at the downgrades. So what is a downgrade exactly? Well, it could mm -hmm. possibly be a product which is made out of a different material or maybe is less expensive than the one you had on the bike previously. Uh, Chris, you recently looked into upgrades, didn't you? Explain the upgrade in a little bit of detail. Yeah, upgrades. Well, of course, you can upgrade your grips, your bars, your saddle, your uh, tires, wheel set, brake pads, you name it, it can all be upgraded. But just because something is, say, a little bit more expensive or made of an exotic material doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be an upgrade, right? Yeah, absolutely. Now, obviously, uh, some less expensive bikes might come with budget parts, so it makes total sense to upgrade some of the components on that bike but you can actually go in the opposite direction and possibly a bike which comes with a carbon bar, carbon wheels, and maybe a super expensive cassette can be replaced with less expensive parts of a different material and yet in no way compromise the performance of the ride. Definitely, and I think talking to cassette, Steve, I think, you know, you can get an average cassette would be like 150 pounds, some of them, you know, 400 pounds. But swapping them out, I think it's going to be about 50 grams difference and no uh, change in the performance of that cassette, is it? Yeah, absolutely. And maybe such things, you know, as a handlebar, you could have a alley bar, which is the same up sweep and back sweep as, say, a carbon bar from the same brand, but it might actually have a better feel on the trail. It might be softer, it might be more comfortable. Uh, and less vibration in it. So yeah, and similarly with the wheel set, um, you know, an alley wheel set may be weighing, you know, just a few grams more, uh, a little bit heavier, might actually give you a bit more traction and also might be more durable. So on an e-mountain bike, that's certainly something to consider. Yeah, I don't think we need to be, t you know, t talking about shaving grams off the weight of everything here. I think the important things in e-biking is durability and reliability of all those components if it's an upgrade. Yeah, absolutely. But what do you guys think? Do you think that downgrades are the way to go on e-mountain bike? What parts do you think that you replace more often than you might do on a, on a standard mountain bike? I think this durability, reliability question, Chris, is something which is really important to us, right? Yeah, it'd be great to hear your thoughts about downgrades. Do you feel a bit of a cheapskate, possibly to taking that cheaper option? Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure, Chris, that uh, Loic Bruni, the multiple world downhill champion, doesn't. Now, he runs alley bars, alley wheels, and an alley frame uh, on his specialized bike, right? Really? And I think tires as well. I think harder for more range, that is definitely an upgrade. If you want to go for the softer option, that's going to give you a lot more grip and that's going to be the upgrade if you're riding technical terrain. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, your tyres is a classic example. You know, maybe a, a harder tyre is going to be yeah. po you know, possibly half the price of a super tacky, super grippy uh, piece of rubber. Um, but, yeah. you know, if, if, if you're riding in, you know, if you want big range, if you want uh, more sort of durability of tyre, then that's, that's surely an upgrade, not a downgrade. Yet at the same time, it's less expensive. It's a complicated business. Now, we're not actually saying that downgrading will be uh, give you a better performance all the time. But what we are saying is it definitely will be easier on your wallet. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, if it's weight savings that you're after, well, maybe avoid the mud and avoid the dirty puddles because that's going to save you weight more than buying a super expensive cassette where you're going to be saving maybe 50 to 100 grams. Now what happens to an e-bike battery is of huge concern to most of us when its life is done. So does it go to a place in the sky or simply to a big hole in the ground? Well Chris has got details here of a new program from Specialized uh, on the recycling of their batteries. Yep, Specialized has seen huge growth recently. They've seen the Levo sales actually triple in the last two years. So there's a lot of batteries out there. 
and obviously it is quite a big concern. Now Specialized have joined up with Ecolamp here in the UK, which are going to make sure all of those batteries, 100% of them, is actually recycled and not one bit is going to uh, landfill, which is super exciting, right, Steve? Yeah, Ecolamp. Well, if you think about it, Chris, I'm sure that you know what 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 does an e-bike uh, battery do? Is it a thousand cycles or 800 or thousand cycles? I mean, it's still going to be, you know. We, the first gen Levos were, I think, uh, 2016. It's probably there's still going to be a few years left of, of battery life in most Levos, but um, unless, of course, you are riding the wheels off your bikes, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. I think that's all over the world. And we're seeing that actually Specialized US have joined up with Redwood again, which are a startup company recycling all those batteries. And they're hoping to roll out that program all over the country, well, all over the world as well, to every country out there. So we're going to see a lot more recycling going on with these things, which is good. Yeah, that's good to see. Now, moving from mm -hmm. Specialized to Bosch, and this came a bit of yeah. a surprise to me, Chris, that uh, mm -hmm. Nino Schurter, one of the most successful World Cup cross country riders ever, has teamed mm -hmm. up with Bosch. This is uh, yeah. this, this is a big, <laughs> big, big news, I think. Yeah, so he's eight times world cross country champion. So obviously that is a powerhouse in himself, but you match it up with an e-bike motor, I think we're going to see some amazing things from Nino. I think so. Light, lightweight <laughs> versus that uh, mm -hmm. Bosch Performance CX Gen 4, 85 Newton Definitely. meters. Whoa, what a combination. Uh, <laughs> and talking of powerhouses, uh, a former teammate of mine, Helen Gaskell, is now uh, teamed up with Specialized. And uh, a really cool mm -hmm. edit that came from her on the weekend, wasn't it? Yeah, well, she started riding an e-bike. I think she hurt her back and she was coming back from back rehab and got the e-bike as a way to get out there, get out, you know, back out on the hills again. But I think she can't actually get off of it. I've seen so much <laughs> stuff from Helen on this e-bike and it's great to see her out there shredding again. Yeah, old gasser, great to see it. And it's all action this week from you folks, mm -hmm. uh, beginning with this shot here on Gelding, oh. Gelding Adelia uh, in Iceland on the uh, Rekanes Peninsula. Now, I'm not sure I pronounced that right, uh, Baldur, but uh, it's- That was it's, good, that was good. It's <laughs> certainly <laughs> a pretty, uh, pretty amazing little, little location there, <laughs> pretty uh, dicey. Uh, yeah. But then moving on to something a little bit more sort of, um, uh, what, was, what was that thing? Uh, Sedate. Last, think, of the, last of the summer wines. Oh, last of the summer wines. <laughs> <laughs> North Yorkshire. Uh, yeah. This is Chris's uh, specialised Levo comp. That's a nice mm -hmm. bit of uh, bit of double track there, isn't it? It is nice. Nice dry stone wall. Lovely shot there. Yeah. As is this one mm -hmm. from Marcel. He's out on his Bulls Evolution Ecor out in Zurich Lowlands. Hockwack, Hockwat lookout point. <laughs> Decided to do a sunset ride and a following night ride both enjoying their e-bikes on this amazing trip as well. Look at that, a bit of sun peeking through the trees. Yeah. Lovely shot. And uh, continuing the uh, volcano theme is mm -hmm. Sebastian and uh, a pivot shuttle out in Ecuador. I mean, whew, places we get to, right? Places mm. we get to. Uh, <laughs> and Jan Jürgen in the forest of Odes uh, on Scott Genius E-Ride 920. It's a pretty moody looking shot there, isn't it? It's nice. And the last shot here from Craig on his Cube Stereo 120 up in Burnley in Lancashire. Burnley. Solo ride. Burnley. <laughs> Burnley. A solo ride after work on a stunning evening. That looks like an epic place to ride, doesn't it? High up in the hills, great backdrop, amazing weather. Loving that. Yeah, uh, but actually that wasn't the last shot, Chris. We have it got, wasn't, was it? We've got Chris uh, on a Voodoo Bizango um, mm -hmm. out on the Worms Head Causeway, obviously, in West Wales. Uh, folks, what an amazing collection of shots there, mm. uh, which really shows you know, the, the different types of places you can get to on our e-bikes. Yeah. Uh, and, and we're seeing more of this, you know, people are really enjoying mm -hmm. uh, the countryside and with you know, the summer coming up in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, you know, opens up a no end of possibilities. Great to see you folks. Definitely. Keep sending your shots in. We absolutely thrilled when we get to see and chat about these locations. 
So uh, now, before we move on to what's on the channel this week, I just want to point out that uh, on, the ch on the shop, we've got uh, a great selection of different color uh, t-shirts. And looking at my script here, Chris has got some things called wind cheaters. Now, I don't actually know what a wind cheater is, Chris. What is that? It's like a lightweight jacket, isn't it? A wind, is it a windbreaker? One that stops the wind and stops you getting uh, cold. But these look amazing, <laughs> new designs. I'm well, sure you had you, you have on our last got, show. I have got one. It's definitely not, not, a, not a, it's not a shell. It's actually quite a warm jacket and mm. it's uh, definitely a great thing to have. I mean, I use mine outside the pub after a ride. Do it's you? a great, great jacket to have. Anyhow, Sleeping in the beer garden, right? Check the shop out, they're all on there. <laughs> now, uh, coming up on the channel this week, uh, to continue mm -hmm. the look is, uh, Chris is looking at um, the different types of helmets you can use on your e mounted bike, trail lid, enduro mm -hmm. lid, or actually full face helmet. So yep. the pros and cons of using each of those helmets. Uh, and then on Sunday, uh, I've done a shootout with high power and low power e mounted bikes using the Specialized Turbo range as an example. It's a massively complex subject. Um, mm -hmm. It's not simply a case of 150 versus 170, but different motors, the lightweight motors and the heavyweight motors are quite different breeds on e-bikes. So it's a, a very difficult decision which, which um, you guys have got to make at the moment. So hopefully I'm going to break that down into something which is more manageable uh, when it comes to your decision making. And then Monday, Chris, another mm -hmm. equally important video is your eight-speed conversion. Talk us through that. Yeah, so basically we took a, an 11 speed bike and changed it to 8 speed to see how much difference it's going to make on the wear of those components, the cost to replace those items, um, and is 8 gears enough to do the riding that you do out on the trail? Maybe, maybe not, but check it out. Yeah, for sure, because, um, I mean, you're looking at the, the cost of some cassettes mm -hmm. these days, you know, we're going to 11 speed, 12 speed cassettes, and, you know, like, the, you know, they're you know they're not cheap, are they really? And, no. you, know, with the, you know, with the advent of, of new products from Shimano, like the Link Glide, mm -hmm. uh, which is three times more durable than their current Hyperglide, it does bring into question the components we're using on our bikes, right? Definitely, so yeah, I think it could be a way of saving money and maybe not losing out so much on the trail, possibly. Now moving on to comments and questions from you guys and yep. uh, recently we had a video on tyres and the importance of getting the right tyres on your e-bike uh, and its mm -hmm. effect on such things as range and speed. Now uh, there's quite a few things there which said that I should have had the Asagai tyres on both the 29 and 27.5. Well actually I did do that, There was uh, we run the Levo SL with both tyres on the same wheel size but mm -hmm. I think the idea was actually to you know, get, get in people's minds the importance of having the right tyres for the conditions that you ride in. But uh, this uh, comment here from uh, Nigel Rantoul says, to get a real comparison of tyres, you should have not changed the wheel size. Please do the test again with one wheel size and perhaps different compounds of the same tyre pattern. Um, then the same comment with less aggressive but still usable tread pattern, it would be a better real world test. Um, yes, so Nigel, as I just mentioned there, we did actually do that and the data is on there. I think it was 102 watt hours uh, versus 108 watt hours. Um, yeah, but I think uh, Ian, e Ian R. R. Yeah, he says, I think he's got the idea of it. He says, I have a 2019 Canyon Spectral on, and since lockdown, I changed the tires to a pair of Maxxis Ardent race tires, and it's been a revelation. I get more range because it rolls better, and also when I try to conserve battery, it's much easier because pedaling with the power off on the flat is a lot easier. Yeah, I think that's a, a definitely an added mm. um, thing you need to bear in mind is, you know, how the bike works when, you, when you're going above 25 kilometers now. A lot of people, mm. you know, there's a lot of pros and cons whether you should, you know, we should be having a higher uh, speed limiter on mm. the e-mail bikes. But yeah, having, having skinnier tires is definitely one way to get over that. Definitely. Uh, now, uh, moving on to your Supercross video, Chris, which was an yeah. amazing, amazing day out. Um, the Magnific Magnif Magnificent Seven on e-bikes, mm -hmm. uh, Sergio <laughs> Bruno. That actually sounds like a crazy idea with lots of potential for development. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I'd echo those those thoughts Definitely. as well. Definitely, you're going to revisit that, I think, aren't we, Steve? And fine tune it, polish it up a little bit, and yeah, there could be a round two coming up, so keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, and this one from Jose Antunes who says, uh, this is not Supercross, this is hard enduro. Um, mm -hmm. It's close. I mean, having been to some of the uh, Enduro World Series Power Stage events, uh, it's certainly uh, not for the faint-hearted. He'll e, e mountain by kill climbs, that's for sure. Uh, and you guys were certainly huffing and puffing on that day, weren't you? 
Definitely, yeah, lie down and literally feel the heart pumping out of my chest. It was, I think the climbs and the downs combined, yeah, it was just a hard, hard day out. Right, it is time for Climb of the Week, and we've got a really good entry in from Austin. Looks like they've had an epic day out on Snowdon. Yeah, so it looks like they rode from Bathe Gallet uh, via the Reezy path. Now, this is a mm -hmm. this, uh, Chris, do you remember when we came down the Reezy? Probably. I do. Arguably one of the greatest descents in mm -hmm. the whole of Britain. Absolutely not ever. <laughs> and one of the toughest as well. But um, it looks to me that uh, part of this, they're coming down through uh, Cum Llan on the mm. uh, uh, on near the, near Gladstone Rock. It is a, an amazing part of the world, and I think this is a great example of, of a of a great day out on an e mountain bike. Uh, yeah, awesome. definitely awesome. And Had fan rain, very jealous. Rain, rain, hail, and sun as well on that stunning ride. I mean, check out that hail in that picture. You can actually see it coming down. It is actually mm. the kind of day you'd get <laughs> midsummer in Snowdonia. Yeah? Really, <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Okay, folks, it's bike vault time, and Tom is kicking things off this week with his Cube uh, Reaction Hybrid Pro out in Moravia in the Czech Republic. Uh, I think with the color coordination there, it's a, a nice opener to the bike vault. But uh, yeah. moving things on to um, Granata and a YT Decoy Company, Austrian Alps, uh, Vorarlberg region, and um, oof, we reckon. White on white. It's a nice shot, isn't it? Yeah, white on white, big mountain in the background. Didn't see too many snow shots in the bike vault. I think it's got to be a super nice. Super nice, followed by, I think this is another super nice. This is nicely mm -hmm. positioned here. Uh, uh, it's Reynolds Track Power Fly out in the Scottish borders. 100% uh, super nice shot. Uh, what a great location in the springtime. Chris, what about yeah, this? Yeah, nice blue sky. What about Ron specialising, Chris? Yeah, he's out in Newton Bull, uh, just riding for a big day out on my e-bike, loving it. Um, I think, yeah, I've got the lake in the background, little waterfall, pine trees, fir trees, dry trails. We get the idea. Super nice. We get the idea. <laughs> and uh, we also get the idea of Sam's decoy comp mm. uh, with new Onza white tyres. White tyres? Yeah, white... we don't see too many of those, do we? I mean, white tyres in Kum Khan. Have you come and can? <laughs> have you come and can it? And come can? Wow, that's 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 uh, wow, Oof. wow, just no, just wow, nice, just wow, nice. Uh, I'm loving this shot here from Ian. He's got a Trek Rail Five. He's up in Glentress and Peebles in Scotland. Wee cheeky midweek run out in the rain. I'm guessing you're quite used to getting out in the rain if you're riding uh, in Glentress. Mm. Nice looking bike, that looks very uh, military like, I think, with that paint yeah. scheme, doesn't it? Right, I'm going to do a first uh, for the bike, Paul Chris. I'm going to do a, ver I'm going to do a first. I'm going to actually <laughs> return to Sam and I'm going to upgrade Sam to a super nice. For the, Are you? For the, yeah, oh, 100%. The white tyres and the camo. I think it's a good And he's from Wales. It's a good look. Mind. It's a good look. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that's a nice, uh, super nice. I'm going to give uh, Ian here, I think, with his military trek. And Steve's high bike all mountain seven in Boldby Scar near Sutton Park in North Yorkshire. I think that really does show off the bike really well. Um, Steve, I think that's definitely a super nice shot. As too, I yeah. think, is the Cube Stereo Hybrid uh, from Andre out in Lunganese, Switzerland. Uh, what a background, what a great background. Mm. Nice, isn't it? Mm. Check out this shot then from Ricky. He's got a 2021 Santa Cruz Bullet. He's in Bentonville, Arkansas. Uh, beautiful ride with my grandson. So I'm guessing he was on a normal bike and you're out on the e-bike, but it's good mixing it up. I think this nice. I think this actually nice. shows. Sorry, Chris, go on. Mm. I was gonna say it's a nice looking shot. I'm not too sure on the angle on that one. What do you think, Steve? I think I think certain bikes suit certain angles and mm. um I think it's a good angle on that bike. I mean, does it maybe look show the down tube is pretty big on it, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. is it got a lot of shadow on 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 the front there? Maybe I don't know. I I really like it myself. I love that color. Absolutely yeah, love it. Yeah, it's a nice looking color, isn't uh, it? Is what do you think of the shot there? I I I'm go. I'd go. I go SN with that. SN, super nice. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Check this one out then, this is Austin, he's got a 2021 Trek Rail, he's out in Oakland Mills in Iowa, uh, approaching the waterfall over the dam and notice the sunlight glinting off my bike and Trek has got a nice paint job, nice shot, um, yeah, you can see that sunset, sunlight coming through, 
Um, I'm gonna give that one a nice, I think. Yeah, uh, but Chris, I think this week, undoubtedly, the super nice and the best bike of the week has gotta be Ranald's Trek Powerfly out in the Scottish borders. I mean, it's a beautiful springtime shot, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Definitely, nice blue sky on that. Mm -hmm. Epic color as well, that bike really stands out, doesn't it? Yep. So nice, but yeah, keep those bikes coming into us here for the Bike Vault user upload service. The details for that are up on the screen. To get anything featured on EMBN, that is where you go to upload it. Yeah, uh, and that's it for this week's show, folks. Thanks mm -hmm. so much for watching. Uh, please join us next week. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, get involved in the comments uh, on downgrades. Is mm -hmm. you know is it, what, what are the upsides for downgrading your e-mountain bike? Would you consider going from 12 to 11 or 10? We want to hear from you and know your thoughts on this hugely important subject mm -hmm. in terms of the durability of your e-bikes. See you next week. Cheers.